always, church <laughs> is such a blessing to us. Being yeah. able to be in the body together, to have those close relationships, to learn about Christ, to serve. There are so many important things about being in church. Mm -hmm. but there are many people who are watching right now who have also been hurt in that environment. And um, so oftentimes when that happens, then they are afraid to go back or mm -hmm. it even changes the way they think about who God is. Well, I'm one of those people. Oh, good. <laughs> it, well, it, it no, that's a horrible thing to say. It, not good. <laughs> it but didn't change how I felt about God, but yeah. I did get really hurt in church. And I think that our expectations have a lot to do with it because you get hurt everywhere else, but somehow you think you won't get hurt by a Christian. But the thing that people have yeah. to realize is that I heard one time that church is just a hospital for a bunch of dysfunctional people. <laughs> and That's it's so true. true. I mean, you yeah. know, we're still people and you still deal with all the same stuff that you deal with. I mean, you're supposed to grow and get to the point where that's not the case, but you have baby Christians and mm -hmm. people that aren't even Christians yet. And, you know, there's just... And mature Christians who do the wrong thing. And mature Christians who are having a bad day yeah. and they take it out on you, and we, we do. I, I, it's foolish to think any time, and I hope this doesn't sound negative, but any time that you deal with people you have a possibility of getting hurt. <laughs> yes. That's why Jesus told us to be quick to forgive and ready to forgive over and over and over and over again and to not be touchy and to not be easily offended. Mm -hmm. And we have to keep in mind that sometimes people may intend to hurt you, but most of the time it's not their intention. They're just dealing with their own stuff and you get in the way of it. Sure. Well, I had a situation where there was a lot of talk about me in church. In other words, I had made a decision that some other people felt differently about, mm -hmm. and it wasn't anything about right or wrong or against the Word of God. It was just a decision that people, a, a small group of people disagreed with. Right. And so it became a much bigger deal than it should have been, and it became a, a point of hurt for me. Right. Part of my question for you, or such a, such a great thing to talk about, is... How do we deal with something like that so that I don't take it to heart so much, I let God heal me, and that people who are in that situation know how to handle it differently when, when it's coming their way? Well, I, I do think that the first thing is your expectations. Mm -hmm. You know, just don't even go into a situation expecting to never be hurt. Yeah. I mean, like, you can't get married and expect to never be hurt. Yeah. You can't. You can't get involved in a group of people and expect to never, ever get hurt. But we have to keep in mind that we very possibly may be hurting other people from time to time and, Absolutely. and don't even realize it. Yeah. And if you realize that church people are still people, you got to amplify the people part, you know, mm -hmm. they're there, but they're, they're still people and they still, there's jealousies, there's, you know, one of the things that that I got really hurt over was caused by a girl that really in essence wanted my job. Mm. I taught the women's meeting at the church and it was it was a good sized meeting with several hundred people and uh, all this talk started about me and people decided that I was this, that and something else and uh, it's amazing the trouble that one or two people can cause especially if they don't recognize when Satan is putting things in their head. That's very true. And, you know, love is supposed to be our number one goal. And they weren't walking in love. They were walking in suspicion. And, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, I, I got really, really, really hurt. It took me about three years to get over yeah. it. And but talk I, can do <clears throat> a lot of damage. Oh, it can. And... Really, I've discovered if somebody comes to me and says something to me about somebody else that's unkind, even if I don't want to believe it, it still affects me. Mm -hmm. You still have a tendency to wonder or look at the person in a different way. That's why each of us, we really need to take the responsibility to 
not gossip and, and not be judgmental. And if you, if you think something that's unkind, take it to God in prayer. Don't take it to somebody else in conversation. Or what does the Bible say? If your brother offends you, go first to him right. privately. Right. The Amplified yeah. Bible says, talk to him about it. It doesn't say go tell everybody else. And usually we don't talk to the person. We talk to everybody else. Yeah. So there are certain things that can happen in a church setting. Absolutely. For instance, there are, there are some times when a person is um, overextended or overworked, asked to do too much, kind of feel like they're taken advantage right. of. There are some times where authority is abused. Right. Um, expectations, like you said. So let's, let's talk about that church hurt and encourage someone who's been in any of those positions right now and... Um, especially how it does relate to who God is in all of this. Well, first, let's talk about not being appreciated. <laughs> That's a great place to start. Uh, you know, let's just say that you work in the nursery and you've been faithful in the nursery for years and years and years. And you hear plenty of complaints from moms who don't like the way you're taking care of their kids. But how often does somebody come and say, I want you to know I really appreciate yeah. you being in here every week? So we have to make sure that we do what we do under the Lord. And you know, these are conscious decisions yeah. that we have to make. And you can't, just because it's God's house, you can't blame God if you get hurt because although God urges people and encourages them to do the right thing, when they do the wrong thing, that's not His fault. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you... You blame him for, and church, you got to think about all the good things. Church is still a great place to be, and as far as being taken advantage of, we all have a tendency to go to the person that we think is going to say yes when we need help, because not everybody is willing mm -hmm. to help, but then we have a responsibility, instead of getting mad at them because they took advantage of us. It's really our responsibility to say no. And that's the big thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we get into blaming everybody else. And you can't, you know, you, you don't want to leave a church because you got hurt. I mean, the same way you leave one is the way you're going to enter the next one. And really, if you're going to go to church, you might as well just figure if you're going to get involved. people that there are times when you're going to get hurt yeah. and I, I remember this was a different situation I was dealing with trying to learn how to be a submissive wife I'm probably still working on that <laughs> but um, I'd been hurt so much by men that I couldn't even grasp how God could ask me to trust God mm -hmm. I mean to trust Dave mm -hmm. and I said I know I'll get hurt. And he said, yes, you will, but I'm always here to heal you. And so, God, we, you know, we take those hearts to God and we believe the best of people. I'll tell you, the Bible says love always believes the best of every person. And I have discovered if you believe the best, it saves you so much heartache and so much trouble. And not only that, I believe that it opens the door gives God an opportunity to work on that person's heart then. Hmm. If, we're, if we're responding wrong, if we're getting angry, then we're preventing God 
from working in that person's life. That's why the Bible says to pray. Oh, that's an interesting way to look at for it. For your enemies. Yeah. And so we can't expect God to work in a person's life to change them if we're not doing things the way God tells us to do them. Yeah. So instead of, well, you did this and you did this and you did that, what about me? Am I handling this right? Yeah. Am I praying That's the only one you're responsible for. Yeah, I can't, I can't make anybody else behave yeah. right, but I can. I can be responsible for myself. And then I think when we do things God's way, that's what opens the door. When you, know, when you pray for somebody that's hurt you, that's what opens the door for God to deal with them. Yeah. I remember telling the Lord one time, I, I don't want to pray for them. I don't want them to be blessed. You know, mm. Bless your enemies. Pray for them, it says. And I was just being honest. I don't want them to be blessed. And I felt like what God taught me out of that was that I'm not going to give them a new car if you pray for them to be blessed. First thing I'll give them is some truth about their behavior. God will open people's eyes to their behavior and what they're doing yeah. if you yeah. do things God's way. Let me ask you one more scenario because um, I think this is so helpful. I think it's so good. Um, you've already talked about the people in the church. They're mm -hmm. just like the people everywhere else. But there is still that thing that we hear so often is church is full of hypocrites. <laughs> I don't want to be there because I've seen how they are. How, how do you um, combat that type of hurt? Well, to be honest, and this is just my feeling, I think for most people, that's just an excuse not to be part of it. I mean, I really think that, yeah. well, they're just hypocrites. Well, Where is then not? go and be a good example. Yeah. And hopefully they'll see your good example and change. You know, we can't, it's, it really is just an excuse because everybody makes mistakes. We all make mistakes. You know, you, you can't be married to somebody for a lot of years and not, make mistakes. Dave and I have been married 50, was it 53 or 54? I forget sometimes. It'll be 54 coming I heard up. you say 54 recently. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, long time. We've been married a long time. You know it's a long time when you can't remember how long it's been. And uh, just the other day, he, he said, well, you don't have to be so snotty about it. <laughs> so I sent him an email later and I signed it the snot. <laughs> and so how many times... Have you had to forgive Tim in the years that you've been married? Quite a few. How many times have I had to forgive Dave? But and how many has he had to forgive me? Yeah. yeah. And not as many, but a lot. Yeah, right. <laughs> not, not nearly as many. But that's better than starting all over. You'll have to forgive that person too. <laughs> that's a great point. So if you get hurt in this church and you leave, I mean, unless you just come in and sit in the back pew, mm -hmm come in just right before the worship starts and leave as soon as everything's over. If you never get involved, then you won't get hurt, but you're hurting yourself. Yes. You're robbing the rest of the people of your gifts. And that's why God wants us to come together. So we share our gifts. And I mean, God puts gifts in me and in you. They're in there for other people. Mm -hmm. Like your gift is work to you. Other people benefit from it. Same way with me. You know, I'm a gifted speaker, but I have to do a lot of work mm -hmm. to say what I'm going to get up and say, and everybody else just gets to benefit from that. So you don't want to rob people of your gifts. That's not, that's not God's desire. Yeah. And I really do think we just need, we need to not be so touchy. Just, you know, something happened the other day, and somebody did something, and I thought, I started to think, well, blah, 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 blah. And then I thought, you know what? That's just silly. I'm just going to make myself miserable. And I don't know they intended to do that. I'm just going to believe the best and yeah. go on about my business. So in closing, what word of, words of healing would you have for someone who was really hurt in their church environment? Well, you take it to God. And to be honest, the first step to healing I want everybody to get this. The first step to healing is to forgive. You really cannot, your soul cannot be healed. Your wounded emotions cannot be healed without forgiving. And secondly, take a look at yourself. 
You know, we, we should not have an attitude of, well, I would never do that. You know, we, we do that. We look at people, well, man, I would never do that. Yeah. Well, you might not only do that, but you might do something worse because you don't know what that person's going through. Right. And so don't leave church because you got hurt. Only go if God tells you to go. And so, you know, I got hurt one time in a church and I wanted to leave. And the Lord definitely put it on my heart. You don't leave until I tell you to leave. Mm -hmm. And he didn't let me leave until I was no longer angry at anybody. Because if you, if you take it out the door with you, you'll take it into the next place that you go. Yeah. And, and don't use that as an excuse. Well, I'm not going to go to church anymore. I got hurt. Or, I'm not going to go to church anymore because they're all hypocrites. All you need to be concerned about is you. You can't fix everybody else, but you can work with the Holy Spirit to be the best you that you can be. Great encouragement. Thank you very much. You're welcome.